All right, well, today we're answering definitively, is Hotshot dead or not? After trying to record it twice outside, it was too windy, goodness gracious. My name's Alex, and I've essentially been a non-CDL hotshot for seven years. I started as a company driver in the summer of 2015, worked my way up to become an owner-operator, and then a company owner, and then growing my fleet, and essentially I got out of the hotshot this year because of insurance, and that's we're in 2022. So you could say I was almost exclusively non-CDL hotshot for almost seven years. So Alex, why are you sitting in the back of your truck, huh? Look, the kids are crying inside the house and it's too noisy to record, okay? So, but what I'm trying to say is I've gained a whole bunch of experience over the years. And I do think there is an actual legitimate business model for hotshot. So when asked, is hotshot dead or is hotshot still worth it? The overarching theme I wanna say should be like, trucking has a lot of freight, but very little interest. Whereas hotshot has a lot of interest and very little freight. <laughs> so that's the problem, right? That's the overarching theme. And so how can you correct, right? What business model can you implement to correct for that? Essentially, it comes down to three options, right? These are your three business model options that hotshot I think can serve. And I'll also give you three rebuttals to each of those options after. Option number one is top level driver funnel. So what a company can do that has semi trucks is get some non CDL hotshots and put them on the road and hire drivers for those trucks. And the drivers that do well, they can offer, hey, we can get you a CDL, you can go drive a big rig and that'll be your top level driver funnel. Option number two is specialized commodity hauling. So maybe you're gonna specialize in plastic tanks that are overdimensional, maybe insulation, right? Because it's always light and requires a 48 footer. And so specialized commodity hauling requires specialized purpose-built trailers. And option number three is small time customers have small time shipping needs, right? So like the big brokerages, they're not going after a customer that ships once a month. They're just not. Like, and there's a lot of small businesses in America that they don't have their shipping figured out, that they need just a small direct relationship with a carrier that will show up when they call and just do a good job because using a broker ultimately is not a good experience no matter how you spin it. It's just inconvenient for the small time shippers to use big time brokers. Now, hold on, before you go out there and start your hotshot company, let me give you a rebuttal to each of the things that I just said. The first one was the top level driver funnel. And the issue there is instead of spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on equipment, on non-CDL equipment, you could instead spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on a proper driver training program, right? A lot of semi-truck companies, maybe with five to 10 trucks, they don't have a proper driver training program. And therefore, that's why they might be enticed to do hot shop because they wanna use that as their top level driver funnel. So I don't know which one's better. Um, you know, maybe the insurance will like one versus the other, I don't know. But that would be the rebuttal to the top level driver funnel. The second option would be the specialized commodity hauling, right? Now, the problem with that is the specialized purpose-built trailers are super expensive, right? It's like you're asking a manufacturer to build something they don't normally build. And the issue with that is you could go get a generic 48-foot flatbed semi-trailer for half the price of a custom-built hotshot trailer. So it's like you want to make sure that if you're going to do specialized commodity hauling and you're going to spend the money on custom-built trailers, that the freight is worthwhile, right? And of course, the third thing, which is small-time shippers need small-time carriers. That is true. But here's the thing. Small-time shippers could also utilize small time brokers. So instead of you opening a hotshot company and trying to get direct customers, um, small direct customers and hauling freight for them, what you could do instead is either maybe in tandem open a brokerage or just don't do any of the you know trucks or don't do the motor carrier authority at all and just get your brokerage going right and your small time brokerage will yeah i mean if, if a bit if a customer doesn't use use you to ship uh, a piece of freight so be it there's not a lot of overhead in brokerage and so you it can just sit there while you're doing your other job or something like that but still opening a brokerage in tandem might be a good idea or might be a good idea to do first before you open your hotshot motor carrier business. Yes, I know, I'm in my kid's playground. <laughs>
And so now with that being said, the conclusion or like the best case scenario for your hotshot company is if you're just getting started is number one, totally get started as a generic general freight, just normal 35, 40 foot hotshot general freight hauler. But keep in mind, you'll run into the same issues that I ran into, which is you don't get to control how much your company charges and you're not control of the expenses either, right? Like fuel goes up outside of your, um, fuel goes up and you don't get to control that. Uh, so if you are in hotshot right now, you are trying to get started. Yes, you can get started as a general freight hauler, but you want to make sure your company, your hotshot company, somehow, it needs to somehow like separate itself from the, the group or from the, you know, from the other carriers. And you can use one of those three things, right? Which is number one is maybe you transition to semi, but your hotshot experience will then become your on like top level driver funnel. It's like, it's going to be a lot of expenses to start a complete driver training program. And so maybe you get a semi, you put a driver in a semi, and then your hotshot will be a, like the driver training, right? With less liability and less risk. Um, so that's an option. Or number two, so you transition to semi like normal, but number two would be like, maybe you go get a purpose built trailer for a commodity that you realized shippers sometimes struggle that for, to find transporters for. It's like, there are those 11 foot wide, 11 foot tall plastic tanks. They weigh 1200 pounds and they just can't find trailers because an RGN is going to charge $12 a mile and they don't want to ship it on an RGN. And so you come in there with a low boy hotshot trailer or like I've been recently thinking about uh, insulation panels, right? Insulation panels are six, 7,000 pounds and all you need is 48 feet of deck. And so it's like technically you could get like those step deck hotshot trailers. I would want to get a 48 foot flatbed and put it behind a hotshot. Um, but we'll, we'll see about that. But still, it's like, imagine you build a purpose, like you have a purpose built trailer and that's what sets your company apart. That's an option as well. And as for opening the brokerage in tandem, well, then you have contingent liability insurance that you're gonna have to be paying. And, and again, that's a whole nother software stack that you got to learn and, you know, bringing customers in. And so, uh, like broker opening a brokerage in tandem is usually, uh, a lot more easier to say than to actually do. And that's why, like, even me, I tried to do that as well. I tried to open my brokerage in tandem and ultimately like you know the trucking business requires a lot of focus and effort and it's like when you split up your effort one of the things will suffer and and so i guess this would be the three things that you could do to like make your hotshot business uh set like different from the rest three rebuttals to each of those things and then three rebuttals to the rebuttals anyways i look forward to your comments down below let me know what you think let me know what you're trying to do different in your hotshot company to separate yourself from the pack and i'll see you in the next one bye